And we're off on our very first adventure, exploring our first dungeon in the Guildmaster training series. We hope you'll join us here on Legendary Tactics. And so the first thing that uh, we do, and if you've played the game of uh, Gloomhaven, the best part about it is the sort of sandbox feel of the map that you can actually kind of explore the map and, and kind of follow up on adventures that seem interesting to you. Um, basically, the, the quest is going to be a little more linear in the tutorial, obviously. So uh, we need to reestablish the trade route with uh, Gibbet Hill to the west and there's bandits along the way. So um, we're going to be able to uh, kind of see how this, um, you know, how this uh, adventure works. And so we pick our destination. Now there's gonna be some bandit archers and bandit guards along uh, the way. So our quest is to unlock um, Gibbet Hill and that is where we're headed now. So um, basically we're going to wander uh, through and and we find uh, as we're going through a wooded grove that we hear a snapping twig and there's someone there and uh, so we're going to uh, this will be our first kind of walk through of an actual adventure without the tutorial there to guide us and I'm going to show you some kind of neat stuff here um, as we begin now there's going to be a little bit of, of uh, text here basically just saying you know we've got uh, two clearings with a couple of bandits each and uh, make sure you don't enter the second clearing until you're ready so you never want to open the door as with all these games never open the door until you're sure you can handle what's on the other side and uh, yeah, every map is going to have different starting positions you there's going to be hexes highlighted in white where your characters can start from and uh, if you in the digital version if you're not sure if there's an enemy there you can hit uh, tab to highlight them and uh, that's going to be useful um, in general so we're going to start brute in the front he's our tank and the scoundrel is going to be in the back now you can actually go through you can see a list of your cards here if you know the cards really well it's a nice quick way to select uh, your two if you're not sure of the cards if you click on the character at the top it gives you a, a list of all the available cards here Okay, now there's a lot to take in, especially if this is your first uh, Gloomhaven uh, game. Uh, best thing to do, first of all, is, is take a look at the enemies, who you're up against. So we've got uh, the bandit archers. Their health is, uh, is four. Um, their attack is two, and their range is three, so that's good. And they can move to, uh, up to two. So um, we are, if you look at the, uh, at the distance here, and if you notice, there's also a trap, a bear trap right there that might come in useful. Um, we have, we're basically one, two, three, four hexes away from that guy and five, six, seven hexes away from that guy. So um, what we're going, you know, this is where you can kind of play the initiative game and, you know, maybe it makes sense for you to, uh, you know, to uh, go later in the turn. Obviously, most times you kind of like to go first because you can potentially do uh, do some damage, but it doesn't hurt necessarily to go later because some, you know, usually what happens is the enemy charges you and gets more in range so you can hit them with, uh, you know, heavier attacks. Also, when you're choosing your actions, don't forget this attack six looks great with two experience, but it burns the card, so it tires you out. So you're going to want to make sure that you're, uh, you know, being uh, uh, careful that way. Um, with the uh, these attacks here, you can see it's got an area of effect. The gray the gray hex is uh, where your character is, and that's the area of effect of this attack. So you can actually, if you got the guys lined up properly, you can actually, um, you know, hit two at once. Same with this one. Same with this one. You can hit three at once here. So um, until we know, I, I generally would recommend that you use those when um, you have the opportunity to. Um, have a low, you know, where you've got a fast initiative and you can move first, move into position and then whack them with uh, with that card. So, because they, if, if they go first, they may not line up the way you'd like them to. Um, so I think uh, with, with Brood, I'm fine with charging in um, and uh, doing some, uh, some damage. Um, so there's an attack four here that we can maybe make use of, initiative 15, so we can race in and, uh, and uh, you know, do some damage the stun won't be necessarily that useful because uh, uh, the guy's gonna die in all likelihood unless we get a, 
a bad attack modifier card or uh, I don't know he gets a shield or something weird happens and then I just need the move four so we got the top of the shield bash and the bottom of the grab and go if you recall that's how that uh, works so now we've chosen the two cards you can see the initiative of the of brute is right there now we want to look at scoundrels cards and um, these ones are a lot of sort of like very interesting like there's invisible attacks there's some ranged attacks which is kind of neat um, and also interesting lots of looting of course so um, that is something that uh, we want to take advantage of as we can see there's some gold here in the back corner um, that we might want to uh, to take advantage of is four gold there so that's that's where the um, the scoundrel is going to be um, eyeing things up now I'm, I'm gonna maybe go a little bit later in the turn uh, because I want to maybe let the other guys move first and move into range so I'm gonna do um, if brute takes out the first guy which should be fairly uh, fairly given I can use the Venom Shiv as my first card, so my initiative is going to be 60, and then I'm going to follow up with a ranged attack of 3, um, and that should be enough likely to, um, as long as this guy moves up, then we should be in good, good, uh, uh, a good space, or we can uh, move up and, and get him. So he's initiative 14, so... They're going to move one and attack one at a range of uh, one and create a three damage trap um, in a hex that's closest to us. So I'm just going to hit Brute, but luckily the attack modifier means that he didn't actually do any damage. He just is going to move up the one space, laying lots of traps, uh, but that's fine. At this stage, um, not only can we disarm them, they may even, there may even be an opportunity for a pull into that trap and uh, you know next turn. So um, we have brute moving first, very simple uh, maneuver. I'm just gonna sidestep the trap, uh, move up there, and then attack four. Uh, oh, sorry, I gotta skip my, the rest of my movement. Then attack four right there and blast them. And we've got a zero modifier, which is fine. That's all we needed, so that's perfect. So he did his job. And let's see uh, about, oh, and there's a move too, and you can loot every hex you enter with that action. That's very handy, but anyway, um, we won't get a chance to do that. Um, you know what, I might just block this hex just so that there's not a trap that ends up there. Oh, wait, better make sure I've got my root. I'm gonna, um, so in this game, you the digital version, you, you probably want to make sure that you're uh, planning your route you don't accidentally walk through a trap because <laughs> but it's pretty good it's pretty intuitive um, you don't really have to worry about the uh, you know um, just pay attention basically the, but the actual interface is pretty smooth so we're gonna do some damage here it's unlikely yeah it's not enough to uh, uh, to get them but um, that's fine so now we're in a position maybe to uh, to finish this uh, up here going to take a look at uh, Brute's uh, cards. We, don't, we don't, don't need a big attack, so we might, uh, might choose this card for our attack. And the question is, can we get within range uh, without burning a card? I don't necessarily, I don't know exactly how long this scenario will be. Actually, if we got a ranged attack, that would actually be best, I think. Let's see what he has uh, in terms of ranged attack. And he has one. He has the spare dagger. So we're going to choose that one. And we're, it's a range of three. Um, and we are one, two, three, four. So we just need a, a bit of movement. Um, we can take that guy. We just need a bit of movement on the bottom card. I don't want to burn. Well, actually, we can just do the... Uh, the if you remember, you don't have to do the bottom move. If you want to take two movement, you can do that with the bottom of any card and to attack, uh, melee attack with the top of any card. So I'm fine with taking um, these two. We're gonna uh, do the attack here and this guy here. And again, hopefully, I don't know if we'll move first here, but we'll we'll see. Um, and uh, this, uh, actually there's a flanking strike, which is super fast, uh, which is great. Um, yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll, uh, we'll do the, uh, I'd kind of like to loot 
broadly next turn. So maybe we'll do the move and then a, um, a loot one maybe. Maybe we can get into position here where we can loot. Yeah, if we get behind, we can do a loot one. That's pretty good. Uh, way. That, I think that'll be pretty efficient. So, um, so we'll see how this goes and who goes first and how this all plays out. Um, just kind of... Oh, 32. Oh, he goes way late, so that's fine. I can uh, I can let um, Brute finish him off, and uh, as in typical scoundrel fashion, I'm going to sneak behind and and do some looting. Oh, wait a sec, I can't do that. Uh, sorry, let me undo that if I can. Or maybe I can't undo it. Um, I'm gonna undo that. And hmm, oops, I may have ma <laughs> may have made a, a bit of a misstep there, and I don't see an undo button. It's not the end of the world, though. Uh, so um, anyway, we can just confirm. We can just do the the honorable thing and take out this. Uh, whoa, what the heck? Okay, we're dancing around here. I'm not sure how to undo <laughs> in this. It's okay though. We're gonna accomplish uh, what we want. <laughs> We're, we're, we'll get to a chance to loot next uh, next time, but uh, don't don't know didn't don't have to dance. I'll tell you that much. Don't worry about dancing around. And we're gonna end the scoundrel's turn. Now, brute actually does not need to um, uh, to do that. So uh, it, to kills anyone. So we we're fine to open the door. Um, let's just make sure. Let's undo the waypoint. Just make sure that the movement is around the traps and there we go there's the other two bandits so we luckily chose a ranged attack so these guys are five health two movement two attack so um, this guy is not in line of sight you can see he's around the corner so we have to attack the guy who is uh, in in uh, our line of sight and we got lucky we got an extra damage there that guy's not going to be long for this world and we're in great shape. So even with him charging up and attacking here, I'll receive the damage. That's fine. It's only one damage. And now, if you'll notice, these guys are actually positioned. Now, he didn't do any damage there. Um, he's it's actually very well positioned for uh, this attack here. Now, it's slow. So we're going to want to see if we can go first here. Um, and we'll just, I don't... I don't know if that ability really matters, but we want the initiative, and then we're gonna do a leaping cleave to take out, or at least hurt both of them. We'll take out the one guy. We'll let the uh, scoundrel do the rest if he's not, so the scoundrel, if she's not too busy looting uh, all the time, uh, then uh, she might be able to help out. And it, as a, <laughs> it's interesting, the uh, attack that we would want happens to be the the loot one that we want so this is kind of you know it's kind of an interesting you know moral obligation here <laughs> on the part of the uh the scoundrel you know well you know what just for fun we're gonna do this we're gonna do some looting and uh we're going to uh, uh you know maybe do some uh i don't know that's uh there's no adjacent traps i don't think um i don't know if it makes sense to do the looting but i kind of feel like that would be a great uh, a great thing to do um ah, that's our only ranged attack maybe we have to do the honorable thing and we'll just uh we'll we'll take a move here to uh, uh basically we're going to uh just take a move and we'll we'll do the honorable thing we'll win the scenario in the normal game you might want to uh you know just say hey well maybe we'll uh you know we'll we'll, we'll not do that and uh but instead here we're going to we're going to hit this guy with the ranged attack actually we can hit both guys with a ranged attack uh here because they're both in sight and uh brute doesn't need that crazy attack the nice um split attack the scoundrel is going to likely take out and do all the damage and you know what we'll move at least we'll loot something we'll move over here and we'll loot something so at least uh, the, the scoundrel is not going to be too uh, she's not going to be too upset and then uh, yeah basically we've got the two attacks uh, this guy's down to two health so uh, you know what we'll 
we'll do this attack just in case um, we draw a bad card here for the modifier. And we did, so that was actually good. We did a, a three. And uh, then uh, we'll just pick this. Action doesn't really affect things. But makes him, uh, you know, <laughs> celebrate to crow the victory here. And uh, that was the first uh, dungeon. So you can kind of get a good sense of how the game plays once you're kind of free of the tutorial and, and walking you through into forced situations to get a bit of freedom. Um, it's a it's a really neat uh, setup and I really like how the cards are done it really guides you through the process I don't think you're you know you, you know you really have to think it out you really have to plan it out especially as you um, you know you're, as your cards begin to whittle away and you have to uh, begin to um, you know plan for either a long rest or a short rest in order to recoup those cards uh, it's a really smart mechanic and you can kind of see it you know working there um, so the um, you know basically there there's the next quest that we're leading to just to give you a preview is uh, to go uh, visit a, a, a spell weaver and learn about elements and uh, more about the magic of the game so we're gonna do that next time uh, we hope you got some value value out of this video if you did please like and subscribe um, and I hope you're enjoying this playthrough as much as I am uh, this is Nada with Legendary Tactics, and we look forward to seeing you next time.